के सो नाउ वी गॉट इन टोटल सेल्स एंड यू वांट टू यू वांट टू वर्क आउट बोनसेस फॉर पीपल एंड देयर आर थ्री कैटेगरीज देयर आर सम दैट विद द डिजिट एक्सपेक्टेशन लेट्स फॉर एग्जांपल पीपल दैट वर एबल टू हैव अ सेल्स ऑफ 5000 USD and above they've exceeded expectation the second category people that have actually met expectation then the third category people that are below expectation then let's say there are some that those ones they are you know they are they are under probation meaning anybody that could not manage a sale above so and so amount should be placed under probation Based on total sales, let me take let me let me let me take it slowly so you know the kind of query you want to do. There are four categories. Some have exceeded expectation. Some they basically met expectation, and of course their bonuses will be dependent on their category. Some they've they they perform below expectation, and the fourth category under probation. So this is this is the this is the rule. This is the rule. People that let me let me let me create another column here. Above five thousand, anybody that 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 the manager is still above five thousand, above five thousand. This one exceeded expectation. Exceeded expectation. Between five thousand, thousand, and five thousand, met expectation. This one met expectation. Between three thousand, between three thousand. And four thousand below expectation. Then the final, the last one is below three thousand should be placed on probation. Below three thousand should be on probation. This is the background of this. You know, like I like I like I like I said, probation. Sorry. Each organization they have they have their their you know their demands. This is a standard for a particular organization. But once you understand how to manage your conditional statement, it can work in different kind of journey. So, but you need to understand how it works first. Once you understand how it works first, then you know that whatever journey you want to apply it, you will still get the same results. We know that. Anybody that could manage a sale of more than five thousand, a sales rep, exceeded expectation. Perhaps there is a compensation plan for all of these things. Yeah. At the end of the year, there is there is an appraiser, and you can use this to judge their performance. So, how do we query this kind of information and get the kind of result that is required? Now, what do we do from here? Let me start with the basic conditional statement, and that's the if statement. If J two greater than five thousand exit. If it is less than five thousand, failed. Like we said earlier, if you are working with a string, you put it inside double quotation. So exit. So if I replicate this, the other ones will be failed. Which implies that for values that are greater than five thousand, I want to I want to see that. Okay, with this person have sold more than five thousand, that means this person have exceeded expectation. The rest should be filled. But then, that is not our aim. Our aim is that okay, if the person have exceeded five thousand, the person, you know, must have exceeded expectation. However, if the person have sold between four thousand and five thousand, then I can say that okay, this person has actually met expectation. Now let me modify this. This um, command, the first one, if it is greater than five thousand, 
this five times also have double quotation exit if it is less than failed but now if you have additional conditions that you want to use all you need to do is instead of putting this field if it is greater than five thousand exit else that's what we're trying to do if it is between four thousand and um five thousand then it should be met expectation we are looping it in we just take this so we take it bit by bit the first one greater than five thousand it can be confusing at first but when you practice it you understand it better first one greater than five thousand exit then if it is not greater than five thousand what is between four thousand and five thousand then it should be met as that's the next we want to do now so what we need to do now is we need to loop that condition inside this so instead of instead of putting the value if force we put the other if condition so the second one be another if again if this so if another if condition now if this particular value if it is between four thousand and five thousand that's the if. But before we use this if condition i need to show you how you manage and 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 function this is the this is this is the function yet let me escape this insert if you want to use and equals to and this is the and function if i want to if i want to pick um five thousand and four thousand this is where i'll write it i'll start with and five thousand comma four thousand so that means this this statement means five thousand and four thousand that's what it means if i want to write all the same thing equals to all five thousand comma four thousand that means five thousand or four thousand so take note now we need this and statement for this conditional statement that we are looking at we don't need all of this so from here um if it is greater than five thousand exit else if let me put my parentheses and this and function it is between four thousand and um between four thousand now that means if it's between four thousand and five thousand that means it's greater than four thousand and less than um less than five thousand that's what it means so i have greater than four thousand that's the first logical statement and less than five thousand let me let me take this again if j2 is greater than five thousand exit else if it is between four thousand that's greater than four thousand and less than or equals to five thousand in excel the string for less than or equals to is i know this might be very very confusing i will i will take my time to explain this in in excel the string for less than or equals to is what you are seeing on your screen if it's greater than or equals to you you, you you press your greater sign then put your equals to that means greater than or equals to. But in this case, four thousand, it is less than four thousand. Um, greater than four thousand, but less than or equals to five thousand. So we don't need this. That's the next condition. Then we close the parentheses. Yeah. Let me give room for us to to ask questions before I proceed for me. So if you have any question, please unmute yourself and ask questions before we continue. If you have any question, please ask your please, question. Which data, which data set? Which data set are you using? This no, I came in um, late. Please. Okay. Which data set is this? Um, I dropped the link in the chat box earlier. Um, I, I didn't see anything there. I even asked a question on the chat box. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Okay, okay. I will um, 
I will um, I will drop it again. I will post it now. Okay. So if J3 is greater than 5,000, we should say exit. However, normally when you when you when you start with your if statement, it will prompt value if force. But this one is just we want to loop other conditions inside the same if condition. If it is greater than 5,000, it should say exit. But if it is greater than 4,000 and less than or equals to 5,000, I should say met expectation. So I will say and, and that's why I showed you how to use and function. And greater than 4,000, then comma. As you are, as you are using this, this, um, this and function, you also see suggestion under. You say and the first logical statement, second logical statement, third logical statement. So once you once you at least once you know what you want to do, you know what exactly you can achieve with this. So and greater than four thousand, then less than or equals to. Well, let me do less than five first, so that you see down less than five thousand. So if it is between 4,000 and 5,000. Value if true, we should say met. And this met will be, because it's string we want, it should be inside quotation. That means it should appear like that, inside quotation. If false, let me say not met. Then I can now close my parentheses. Note, when we are looping in if function, inside another if function, the number of parentheses that you need to close will be the same number of if statements that you use. In this case, we use two if statements, so we need two parentheses to enter. So, so where's 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 our error coming from? All right, okay. If J two greater than five thousand, exit. If J two, what we did that time, we we did not reference itself. If J2 greater than 4,000 and J2 less than 5,000 met expectation, else not met. So we have that. So then we can now replicate this downward. So you can see that now the condition has actually been updated such that those ones that are above 5,000 we see exit, the ones between 4,000 and 5,000 we see not met. Then we can also, we can also put this other condition too so that we get. The kind of result that we demand from all of those things. So now let me let me modify that again. I'll run through it again. The if statement. If J2 is greater than 5,000, exit. Else, if J2 greater than 4,000 and J2 less than 5,000 met expectation. Let me change it to small uh, lower case. Uh, once you use that, I will give you for us to ask question. Met expectation. Then the other one, not met. Now, the next condition now is if it is between 3,000 and 4,000, I can say below expectation. So instead of closing the if statement here, I can then you know, include another if statement. If, if, and our and function, we are similar reference to J2. So if J2 is um, greater than 3,000 and J2 is less than, I can start to say less than or equals to less than or equals to um 4000 then what should happen let me close that and statement so what should happen below expectation i'll do it now so we can get it clearly below expectation else probation that means any other figure below three thousand the person should go on probation
then like i said the number of um if statement that you have will determine the number of closing parentheses that you use so we have three parentheses one two three then we'll click enter so yes and that is it so you can see it all of those ones that are below three thousand we can see that they are under probation already that's the beauty of if statement so now if if i want to you know find out those ones that deserve to be compensated maybe those ones that exit um, expectation all i need to do is come here and filter this page so before i go there let me let me give you for us to ask questions then we can we can um continue from there so if you have any question you can just go ahead and ask a question now i know if statement can be very very confusing but the, the the bottom line is understand what you want to do and how you want to get what you want to do how you want to get it done if you have a question go ahead and ask your question then we'll continue i'll still do one more for if statement so we understand you know how we can navigate around this if statement and get the result that we want okay mr um or before uh, mr allow me priscilla jones go ahead please Priscilla Jones, go ahead with your question. Um, thank you so much for today's um class. Um, I want to quickly ask: Can we say use this um if function to create um like a result sheet? Yes. Yes, I'll show you that how you can how you can do about that. Yes, we can. For example, you have you have a we have um result of students, and you want to actually know their their grade. Let's for example, above eighty is um distinction between 70 i want to believe that that's what you're trying to say between 17 and 80 is yeah, or between yes. 60 and, okay between 60 and 70 is um let's say um, um credits for example you can also use this if statement we we'll try that out too depending on what you want to achieve and the kind of visualization and results you want to get this if statement is just the solution so once you know how to you know navigate and manipulate your way around the if statement then you don't have any problem and for me, self, I've been in, and I'm still in um, school setting. So this one statement that we use to get the grades of students, let's say there's a compensation plan for them. So Mr. Lau, we go ahead with your question. Okay, th thank you. So my question is that, um, and the positioning yes. of that and is where I think I'm having an issue with. Is and you okay? know, yes, uh, I actually do understand how you set up that um, operation but it's just that location of that and i think that's where i have a little gray area thank you oh, okay all right thank you very much now um before before if i use that and inside that loop i explain something conventionally when one let's say in, in english for example if i want to say mr a and mr b my hand will always come after the first um uh, statement so to say so let's say there's Mr. A, there's Mr. B. I want to bring them together. Conventionally in English, the right thing to do is the first statement will come first. Then and is a conjunction. I believe that that's, that's what you are trying to say. And is a conjunction that is meant to join two things together. So if I want to join A and B, and should come after the first statement. That's the conventional way. But Excel is a language itself. Google Sheet is a language itself. There's a way to understand those information. So if I'm bringing two statements together, my function, the function I'm using, will come before them. Then what I'm joining together will come side by side. So anytime it sees that, come out, we separate them. Anytime Excel sees that, or Google she sees that, you are, it, it, it knows that I want to join these two together. So A and B, definitely A and B in Excel will be something like this, equals and, and first. Because I want, it's A and B I'm interested in. So A and B in Excel will be something like this. And open parentheses, A, comma, B. This is the way, this is very soft to understand conjunction. If I also want to do all, my all will come first. As soon as I bring all first, I'll bring those statements. If I have three statements, it can be A, B, C. Comma, we separate them. This automatically is, is recognized in the Excel as A and B and C. If it's all, all will come first. All will come first. So now, 
Let me answer the question of um, the other person, uh, Priscilla. I want to use this to set up the grading system for students. So I have um, I have um, random grades. Let me bring random grade into this. 100 random grades, for, for example. Let me generate 100 random grades. Then I'll use that to now, you know, to now um, to place them into different sections. Those that that um, that are decision students, those ones that maybe they fell between um, credit, the ones that are filled. That's what I want to do. So under random grades, and we'll do that in a moment, um, or in percent. So if I have hundred students, and quickly I want to just filter the ones that. The ones that are failed and the ones that are passed. That's my aim. So, how do I do that? This same if condition, if statement. In a moment, I'll be able to get the ones that are failed, list them out, and you know, do the appropriate thing for, 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 for those ones. So, let me see if I have those 100 random grades from there. Okay. So, look at this, look at this, um, this figure. It's just a random grid. It's at random anyway. So, so let me say I have 80. Let me generate random grid 80. Um 53. 36. So I'll demonstrate that again so we we'll understand better. Now I want to I want to group these ones. Distinction, um, credit, pass, and those ones that are filled. Anybody that scored between 70 and 100, that's a distinction student. From 50 to 69, that's um, let's say a B, 70 to 100, A, um, 50 to 69, B. 40, 41 to 50, 41 to 49, D, and so on and so forth. Now, let me do that. So, let me create another column. Insert. So, I'll say if the first one is always the easiest. If L2, if L2, if it's greater than 70. You can see I already have suggestion on that. Value is true. I can say you should return A or distinction, whatever you want um, the system to return. Now, else, if it is not above 70, if it's just one statement that I want, if it's just one condition, I can just put the value if first. Well, in this case, I have multiple conditions. So instead of putting value if first, I'll put another if condition inside. So then I can say, if second one if l2 now there are two things now if it is if it is um, greater than 50 and less than or equals to 69 you know there, there won't be a, a, a coincidence for this one it should be greater than or equals to Look at the way I, 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 I specify my own greater than or equals to. So greater than or equals to 70, that's an A. So now if it is less than 69 or equals to 69, less than or equals to 69, and also greater than or equals to 50, that should be a B. So now I will specify my AND function. That's what uh, Mr. Diola was asking. The AND will come first. AND, then open parenthesis. So if L2, if it is greater than or equals to 50, that's the first logical statement. You can see that even the AND function is already suggesting to me. Comma, the second logical statement that you are bringing together, L2 is less than, less than or equals to, less than or equals to, 
the secret of this thing is practice. Well, if you are practicing and you are typing these if conditions, you get some error message. But as soon as you practice over time, you, you tend to master it. Then we can close the AND function. So if L2 is greater than or equal to 50, and L2 is less than or equal to 69, value is true. I should say that is a B. A B. And don't forget, put it inside double quotation. Those things you are putting inside of quotation means that you want it to come out that same way. It is not a formula in Excel. Now, that is a B. Now, if it is less than 50, we can say there are some courses that once you score below 50, you failed. So if it is less than 50, else we can say it's what failed. Failed. Then we can now close the number of if statement that we use, that you use is also the number of um, closing parentheses that you specify. Close, close. So, so we miss out some said, do you want to? If it's just many times, if you miss out one closing parentheses, it's easier. The software will correct that marker. Is that we found a typo in your formula and try to correct it to be you. So it is that was just a minor thing. So we have that. You can see it. So now if if I want to now I want to get number of students that you know that failed or that scored an A, what do I do? I'll just simply come down here, then filter the other ways, or can filter. We've done filter in, in, um, in previous classes. We'll come to data, then filter. Then you can now click this drop down icon and you select what you want to filter. Those ones that are filled, that's how they see. Okay. So automatically, I will see the ones that are filled. So for me, I can pick the students that are filled and most likely will repeat the class. Most of us we might still find it a little bit challenging to navigate this conditional statement. I can tell you that this is one of the most challenging parts. So once you want to understand the syntax and how you can navigate around all of those things, it becomes easy for you. So I, I believe that you might still find it difficult in a sense. The secret is practice. And as many times as possible that you encounter any error or you have any issue, you can always reach out to us and we'll find a way of you know, helping you out in all of those things. So if you understand this conditional statement, you can achieve quite a lot of things. You can see that the other place I was asking about using to get grades. I don't know, I don't know um your your area of specialty, but you can see that this is something that is applicable in all you know sphere of influence that you might be. Whether it is academic, it is it is um, business, whatever you can you, you you can you can call it is actually applicable in all of those things. So now now that we now have all of this, what do we do with all this information? It's easier for us. We can tomorrow when we when we when we start looking at people table, you know that this can actually give us a lot of results. But from me, I can decide to filter how many people exceeded expectations so that we know the reward plan for them. How many people you know are under probation so that i will know what exactly to do so these are the kind of information that we present to top management staff and they, they will listen to you that yes this person knows what um what um, he or she is doing so there are a lot of things that we can do we can do from here you can see bonus eligibility no yes with this information those ones that have exceeded we can also put if condition bonus eligibility just put if it is exit yes so we can still put conditional statement here to get some of these stuff that, that we can see from it. So when you are practicing, you encounter some errors, you encounter some issues. That's when you begin to gain mastery. So thank you very much. That will be all for this night. Thank you for um, joining in. We go again tomorrow. And I will drop in the group. Some people are complaining about the timing. I drop in the group. Let me, let me seek our opinion. Some are saying 7 p.m. will be better off for them. So let me see if 7 p.m. is better for us weekends, then we can shift the time to 7 to 9. But if not, if majority are cool with this 6 p.m., then we maintain 6 to 8. So thank you very much and um, enjoy the rest of your evening.